Genie grind and watch him get a rich, huh? Remember when I said I hit a lick, huh? I don't really wanna fuck the bitch, what? Willie went and made another hit, okay? Like Prada on my motherfucking kid, huh? Louis on my motherfucking hip, huh? Curry how I dunk, no switch, hey, fucker gonna fuck that bitch, hey, if you ain't gonna fuck with me, you a dumb fuck, uh? Put up a hit up, I feel like one punch, uh? Look at my bank and I'm getting dumb rich, uh? And I'm gonna count it up till a hundred, uh? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in today as we discover the what if. That is, what if Deku was the Abyss Watcher? Basically, Deku will be born to Cthulhu, one of the overlords that uh, rules over the underground cesspool that is Tokyo's underground. A villain's uh, hideout, basically. Where all the villains that would fight back or not want to be detained, that would run away, would be detained instead. As it was crushed long, long ago by Lady Baba Yaga and her quirk, which was to basically make a secure area. And it, w it has held to this day. No villain is able to escape that barrier's grasp. So it's just basically a mosh pit of different villains destroying each other, making encampments, you know, different ones uh, banding together and just as the same treating each other like shit. Uh, just general mayhem. Just a mosh pit of people reeling, reeling to do something, to get out. As they fight all below, there needs to be some trimming once in a while, they like to call it. The Abyss Watchers were born as this was needed. The, Ab the Abyss Watchers was an organization, a brotherhood formed under this sheer purpose of d um, killing all the villains that got out of the underground, which is actually quite a lot. Since its barrier has been dwining, they've been looking for another with a quirk big enough to keep the, all the villains underground. And this came in the, um, the first son of Cthulhu, Cthulhu II, Cthulhu Jr. <laughs> His quirk was massive. It was a uh, uh, summoning quirk, able to summon all of his father's powers in different ways. Uh, he would have, unfortunately have to grow up first, which was no problem because Cthulhu himself was immortal, as were all of the uh, brotherhoods of uh, the Brotherhood of the Watchers. Well, they're all immortal too. They were part of his clan. All of this was linked together. And his second son, however, a bastard son, one that he did not have himself, was not granted immortality because of it. Unfortunately, he was quirkless, but born with a mark, the mark of the wolf, the watchdogs. The watchdogs of Farron had marked him since he was a child. This would mean that he would have to grow up with them. Once he was to turn 10, he was to have to be brought to them or forced to. His father prepared him. As soon as he, was, he turned eight, he was deemed worthy of training with his butler, which was attached to him since he was young. He was actually thrown into the mosh pit in one of these adventures that his butler was training him on, and was almost killed. Multiple times he was thrown around to different gangs, different fightings, until he met the big boss. One for all. I mean, all for one. It was intense. The sheer power brought him to his knees until he realized that this was Cthulhu's kid, and then Cthulhu's might was brought down upon him. His older brother had warped straight next to him. when he, he This was his birthday, actually, when he would turn five. His brother was said, quite a birthday party you got going on here. Come on, let's go home. His bro, um, he almost started crying because of uh, what he had been through. However, his brother, um, he did not want to show any of, uh, any weakness to his older brother. After all, his older brother was quite a bit stronger than him, if you couldn't tell. They warped out of there with the tentacles of Cthulhu surrounding them and then bringing them underground and then warping them back to his home. He bring, bring bought, <laughs> him being brought back home so safely, his uh, father Cthulhu, mad as ever, uh, uh, about his son being taken, and also congratulates his older brother. This makes him grow a little bit jealous, however, he does earn it and accepts defeat this day. But he would never be caught being so weak. Next time, he'll be saving his older brother, and immediately goes off to train with his butler. 
uh, forcing uh, his way back to his butler. Um, his butler was worried sick and almost almost hugs him. However, he pushes him off saying that we need to continue training. He continues his training ferociously for the next year. Uh, this included m mental training and also going back into the dome. Sort of, you know, taking care of some lower villains and, you know, getting hurt quite a lot. He gets uh, a scar that was cr uh, cried across his neck from, you know, the meeting that he had with Al Alpha One. And he would never forget because he would almost got his throat slit, but it was very close. He had gotten his slit, actually, but with Cthulhu's magic, it sort of repaired itself. Um... So after all these years, once he turns 10, he, um, he, um, his father, you know, exiles him to, um, the watchdogs of Farron. However, he considers it that he went himself. You know, they have disputing, uh, disputes about that. But he starts his walk towards the watchdogs of Farron. All the way through the, um, the, uh, graveyard's keep. All the different places that he needed to go until he got to the watchdogs front door. As he walks into it, it's an all-out war going on. Thousands of watchdogs um, being, uh, you know, thrown around uh, until a gigantic a giant uh, walks upon among them, slamming his fiery axe down upon one of them and almost crushes his legs. However, all the rest of them start jumping along the stem of it, jumping onto his face and then thrusting their great swords into his eyes. This gushing blood out upon all of them. Their cl their blood f flinched stuff, just, you know, sort of wrinkling in that glimmer of blood. Almost, it, it caused an excitement in, sort of, in Deku. This sort of epicness, this feeling of this epic battle going on. He wants that. He needs that. As the giant falls down to his knees and then falls down to the ground his body laying there um, silently. They all start ro tying ropes around his limbs, cutting them off and then bring, um, dragging them out. Only two to a limb, which was insane to him. Each limb was almo almost one, pat one ton. Uh, it only took two of them to, to uh, sort of drag. He, uh, you know, sort of uh, waves them down as one of them comes over looking down upon the uh, upon him not saying a word however then um he realizes that what he's looking for is actually his uh his tattoo he um opens up his neck however there was a scar over it uh the scar almost overlapped it however uh it was right at the wolf's mouth just enough to keep the wolf perfect form the watchdog nods his head and then uh points over to their main captain Eins. the men that he would be learning under for the next e few years you know as his sort of trainer Eins was the sort of man that would never speak softly he would always confront anybody that came even 10 feet near him he would constantly be telling people what to do he was a control freak and he, he fought like one too he controlled his enemy's movements. He didn't use a greatsword. He, he only used his dagger. He would always counter attacks, become, you know, part of the battle. He would use his environment to his advantage. He taught all of these to um, Deku in later years. Deku, once he gets within, you know, five feet of him, he immediately puts his hand on his shoulder. Looking at his, uh, you know, watchdogs thing, he immediately brings out the uniform and then throws it back away saying that you don't earn that just yet. First, your first challenge, since you're only 10, break this log with just your fists. Then we'll start talking. They throw him outside um, and he starts punching at the log. He breaks almost his hands in, you know, uh, until they're red, but he cannot break the log. There's no physical way to break a log with your hand, unless you were to just break it on it and somehow break the log with it, until he realizes that they don't even see him. He can just cheat. It doesn't even matter. And right as he's about to um, put, um, he takes up like a sharp rock, he punts that into it, and then take um, makes up a makeshift hammer, and then, you know, beats the he the head of the stone inside 
cracking the, the log in half. As he walks back up to the gate, one of the watchers, Igoris, was sitting on, on the steps, says, You know, kid, cheating is not exactly what we're going for here. Sure, creativity, but <laughs> cheating is just another thing. Deku, you know, shocked and then also is like, you know, caught guilty, you know, he didn't, he, it was not, it was not like he didn't expect this, of course. So he sort of tries to rub it off as he's like, yeah, and what does it even matter? That, that test is impossible anyways. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And he's like, good. And then he starts his way back in. He's like, there's a point to it, however. Don't give up. You see, if you were to punch that thing for another day, it would have been fine. It would have split right in half. Its fibers were starting to weaken, don't you understand? You were just so impatient that you had to stop. Whatever. Continue on, please. And die while in the meantime. Your impatient ass cannot even last two days out there in the jungles. He's like, I've been training there, you know that. I have lived there my whole life. And you're, cha you're telling me that I won't even last for a day? So what you're saying, kid, is you could live there for a whole year. I already have. You know, of course, he's a little bit bluffing. He was sort of going for the smaller villains. A uh, controlled environment with his father, basically. He was sort of bluffing at this point. And he's like, then, kid, why not? As suddenly uh, he uh, picks up the uh, Deku by his sort of collarbone and then chucks him as hard as he can throwing him over the wall which was separating the the watchdogs of Farron from the main dome and Deku lands right back into the main uh, dome and he starts freaking out about what he's going to do for the next year he will be locked outside of the watchdogs of Farron they watch over his sort of progress in trying to survive there, now not in this controlled environment with his father, he would have to scavenge off of food and different stuff. Uh, he would have to resort to cannibalism also uh, sometimes, causing him to become a monster in technical terms. Cannibalism turns you into a monster in the Dark Souls universe, by the way. Uh, just some self-made lore by me. Don't worry about it. Uh... And sort of Deku uh, sort of becomes rabid for a little while there. However, he brings himself back by the end of the year by by um, by seeing his brother's um, photograph again, and seeing that you know he, he, what the monster he's become by becoming a cannibalism, by going to cannibalism. However, a lot of the people there have resorted to cannibalism. A lot of it. It's a, it's a rough it's a rough place. All right. So Deku returns back from being rabid, and then the watchdogs of Farron find him again. All ten of them, the ten high uh, seats, find him again. As he was just defeating a mid-rank, you know, camp encampment of villains, he had finally found food, and that motivated him enough to just destroy this camp. I mean, he was going one after another. He threw his dagger straight through one guy's head. It popped out the other side. He grabbed it, threw it straight into the guy's gut, gut ripped it all around his stomach. He resorted to, to his like boiling water quirk, which almost, uh, almost hit him in the face, barely boiling off his left ear, which then he resorts with a punch to the stomach, ripping out his guts with his, with his bare hands, and then he finds his, his knife inside of his stomach, pulls it out, chucks it into the guy's head, and then, uh, you know, um, you know, lets the blood spray all over the rest of the enemies, and they start running. He finds the food cache and then comes out, uh, sort of laughing. They find him, finally, and he looks back at them, saying, So you finally came back, after all these years! I resorted to cannibalism, you know that, right? They're like, you passed. And he's like, I passed? This was all a test? And they're like, yeah. And you passed. Congratulations. You're now rank one. And that, that's like, that's like a bitch left him, right? That, that hurts. He's like, rank one? This was, this was rank one? I, I did, I did, I just deleted a whole camp of like mid-rank 
demons. I mean, mid-rank villains. And this is all I get? They're like, you got your clothes, now let's go. Your training shall begin shall begin tomorrow. And that's basically the test for to see if you're worthy of being trained by the 10 watchers that are left over all these years. Uh, basically, they start training him in the ways of the sword and the great sword and dagger. He, uh, you know, already made his own dagger while he was, uh, you know, forging out there trying to kill villains. Um, and he got a lot of points from killing all those villains. They were counting up the bodies that he was taking. After all, they had patrols with like three of uh, uh, uh three watchdogs at a time. And, you know, uh, they would always find uh, dagger wounds and villains and count that towards his score. And he got the highest score of any Farron uh, child. Well, they call them newbies, uh, child, uh, Farron child ever. And it's, it, it was insane to them. And they're like, yeah, okay, this kid has earned his way in. So after all of that, they start training him. And now he starts getting some proper training with the dagger. He fuses what he's already learned with the dagger and also what he's resorted to, uh, his sort of beast way of fighting, his uh, goriness, his uh, way of just destroying enemies. Uh, it, it counteracts a little bit of what the Farron goes for. Like, uh, their, their whole code he starts to learn is, you know, like, protect those who can't protect themselves. And it's like, he's like, what the fuck? Dude, I've re I've resorted to shit worse than this. I don't even I don't even care, and that's what they hate about them about him. You know, they're trying to teach him to be a better person and be like you know, to you know defend people instead of you know just seeking after villains. But you know he he's the son of goddamn Cthulhu, right? He's not going to listen to them that, that easily. So they they take it upon themselves to break him in, sort of you know trying to destroy his will. Um, this sort of arrogance inside of him that they find. Purging his demons, they, they call it. Uh, and that comes with trying to nail in this sort of, you know, righteous way. This sort of understanding that, you know, his power needs to be used to help others. And, uh, yeah, he starts to learn that very well. He becomes one of their most powerful members within no time. Once he's turned about 15, he's become one uh, part of them. He's become a Nas, um, and he, he is excellent with his uh, with his freaking great great sword. He loves using it in situational uh, sort of ways. He he uses it to throw it against you know a wall or something like that, and then jumps off of it, using it as a platform to do any uh, number of stuff. Uh, he's great with the dagger in close combat. He will destroy any enemy that comes in front of his way. However, he has not fully learned the way of Theron. You know, the great dog. Uh, and once he's turned 15, you know, he becomes part of the High Table. High Table was 10 of them because there's literally only 10 of them left. After all, they've been defending this place for years. Uh, one of them actually dies on that day fighting All for One, who's basically the only person that can fight them. Uh, and that's because that was his trainer, actually. And he he gets so freaking pissed off that this dude kills his trainer. Uh, sort of, Igris, Igris, I believe. Uh, that, you know, I mean, uh, Eins. Eins dies, right? Eins. Uh, and he seeks revenge because he's not as trained as the other emotionally. He's not trained emotionally that he seeks revenge he goes he strikes out he instantly takes up his great sword and dagger and just jumps out the window he does not give a fuck and just mows down any villain in front of him that includes shigaraki which who he takes off his left his uh his left arm uh and all the hands with it after all he was crafting nomus to try to break down the, the barrier uh all for one and that's what he, uh freaking his master found out he instantly throws his dagger as fast as he can trying to go through all the villains however uh the dagger stabs all for one right in the left eye 
taking out that left eye, but he doesn't have a left eye. He doesn't have any eyes, all right? So it basically just hit a spot where his brain is and very close to killing him. And then he realizes that this kid was the same kid as before. He orders all of his villains to come back to him. And that includes Shigaraki, who uh, basically, you know, tries to grab onto him really close. Uh, he gets really close to grabbing onto his arm, um, which then he just shoves his, his um, right arm off and then almost uh, almost takes up his greatsword and um, like slices him in half. However, one of the Nomus takes it, tanks that for him. And the Nomu grabs his greatsword, throws him up into the air. Deku, however, um, throws his greatsword as fast as he can down to the ground as fast as he can, slicing the Nomu in half. Before he can get to the ground, uh, Shigaraki kicks over his greatsword, great um, which then he responds in him kicking Shigaraki to the ground until uh, a gunshot is heard and he gets shot in the left arm by Captain Mustard, whatever his mustard gas dude, fucking dude. Apparently, all of the League of Villains are still here. However, a lot of them are out right now. Like, Twice is not there right now, but, you know, all of his clones are. They start attacking Deku, uh, however he says enough of this as he uses one of their signature moves, which then uh, he holds out his arm um, as his dagger starts to um, unhinge itself from his brain, but it won't come out of his brain. He can't. It won't. So he takes up uh, the knife that you know one of the Nomus was holding to try to kill him that was stuck in his sort of stomach. He rips it out of himself and then starts using that as his pivot point, which then he jumps over and then starts swinging his uh, greatsword wildly as he was jumping around, using his uh, knife to grab into the ground and use that to swivel. He does this over, repeats this three times over and instantly cuts down almost 12 of the Nomus, defeating all of the Nomus that was in his area. And uh, one of the twice twin, uh, you know, copies tries to jump on him which then he responds with sh um, shoving his great sword into it um all the rest of them stand in silence as uh all, all for one looks back and see sees you know one of the nomus breaking through the barrier and uh you know all uh basically deku looks over to see the gigantic hole that was in it he says damn it i took too long uh he uh, looks up to the sky and then howls as loud as he can. This is a signal to the rest of the uh, uh, watchdogs until he's he's jabbed in, inside of the stomach, uh, knocking the wind out of him. And then one of the Nomu's, uh, you know, one of their great, um, greatest strengths was, you know, their strength and then knocks him out. Uh, he basically got overfloated and then all the rest of the... Uh, Farron keep, you know, watchers. They come over to his body and then wake him up soon. However, all for one got away. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you had a great day. I hope that I'll see you sometime, somewhere. Goodbye. Genie ground, I watch him get a rich, huh? Remember when I said I hit a lick, huh? I don't really wanna fuck the bitch, what? Willie went and made another hit, okay? Like Prada on my motherfucking kid, huh? Louie on my motherfucking hip, huh? Curry, how I dunk, no switch, hey, fuck it, gonna fuck that bitch, hey, if you ain't gon' fuck with me, you a dumb fuck, uh? Put up a hit, I'm gonna feel like one punch, uh? Look at my bank and I'm getting dumb rich, uh? And I'm gonna count it up till I